Hey there, I'm Greg Finn. And I'm Jess Budd. And it is officially Marketing O'Clock here on May 24th, 2019. Remember, you can catch our famous Friday news shows each and every Friday morning. And if you want to follow along with us, just check out our show notes. Head over to marketingoclock.com for all the links from today's articles. And please subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And kicking us off this week, no more weird neck bends. That's right. The community asked for it, and now it's here. Instagram officially announced yesterday that they are taking the feedback they received, which is nice to hear, and will now be supporting landscape videos in addition to the vertical format we all know and love or hate. Hate. (laughs) Definitely hate, right? Definite hate over here. Yeah, we all hate that. So this is funny because they said that they wanted, that viewers wanted to watch IGTV, quote, in a more natural way, which, yeah, right? I mean, I know that phones go vertical, but a lot of video isn't. So people were just uploading stuff that then you had to go horizontal. And personally, I have my rotation locked on my phone so that I can't even do that automatically. I don't like looking at my phone that way. It is very unnatural to me. So I think I know the answer to this, Greg, but it begs the question, how do you watch video on your phone? Like a normal, sane human, and I watch it in landscape mode. Which way is your phone? Horizontal. What? Horizontal. Yeah. The wide part. Yeah. No. No, 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 no. Just that's how you watch videos. I know. But see, my favorite thing about all of this is that you can watch the landscape video in vertical format and it just puts the black boxes around it now on IGTV. <laughs> like, I don't want to turn my phone around like that. I hate it. I know people like it. I don't do that. You watch video. Say you're watching a TV show. You watch it in portrait format? Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on my phone. Yeah. I hate I hate. Hate, like I loathe having to turn off my little screen lock that allows my phone to go side. I hate it. I'm worried about you. <laughs> <laughs> you watch YouTube videos in portrait. Yeah. I mean, I don't do a lot of watching on my phone, but when I do, I'm like, I don't want to hit that little toggle button to turn my lock off. No, like I just don't have time for that. <laughs> I'm worried about you, Jess. <laughs> you shouldn't <laughs> I'm be. I'm officially worried. <laughs> I'm fine. IGTV now supports my habit. It's going to be okay. So back to the point of this whole thing is that this is really exciting news for content creators because you don't have to worry about creating a vertical version of your video. You can just upload your creative that you've already made for all the other formats. And so that normal humans can consume it in landscape fashion. Normal humans. Yeah. Not me. (laughs) All right. Next up. Google search has a new look for both organic search and for ads. So what is new and organic, you may be asking? Well, from Google themselves, they say a website's branding can be front and center, helping you better understand where the information is coming from and what pages have what you're looking for. What? Branding in organic search? Hmm. What does this mean for us webmasters? Well, it means you're getting your name and your icon or favicon to show up in organic search results, which is really cool. It's pretty nice, yeah. You know what's really sad? What? The first thing I thought of is that we can't have nice things. And I just thought of how (laughs) can people spam this? Oh. How can people spam the logo? The icon, the favicon. Do you have ideas? No, I just was thinking, (laughs) like, maybe you can put something in there. Like, what if you said something like ad? You can merely mess with it. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. I'm just trying to think of what people are going to do (laughs) or the best or number one or put a star or something like that. Ooh, number. I'm just going to put number one on all of of my sites. Number one, A++. (laughs) But I read all the fine details and Google said that they will not show any favicon that it deems inappropriate, including pornography or hate symbols. For example, swastikas. If this type of imagery is discovered with a favicon, Google will replace it with the default icon. Whoa. <laughs> what, is, what is the default icon? I don't know. I guess people are <laughs> already just going nuts with this. How are you going to squeeze pornography into like a 10 by 10 image? Is that, isn't that how big favicons are? They're very small. They're very small. So maybe you get a microscope <laughs> out and look at it on your phone. We've got to protect the children. I'm glad yes. Google has a default. So anyway, that will show on mobile search results. And you can click through to marketingclock.com and see all this in action. Now to the ads format that Google is changing. Google states that when you search for a product or service and we have useful ad to show, you will see a bolded ad label at the top of the card 
alongside the web address so you can quickly identify where the information is coming from. Bolded. <laughs> a big, a bolded ad. This is pretty cool for users, right? Yeah. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. It is not easier to discern with this. The current version of ads has a outlined green ad text there. And this is just simply ad and it's bolded in black. Mm -hmm. No different color, no other notifications of, uh -huh. as to what this is. And to me, it looks even more organic. And you're over there devilishly shaking your head. I am. And I'd like you to tell the audience <laughs> what you slacked over to our marketing channel <laughs> when I shared the news of this. My exact words were, this pleases me. <laughs> hashtag hot take, hashtag team paid. Because you know what? I'm going all in on the paid. I feel like if organic is going to be pretty like that and possibly be more enticing to click through because of the little favicons, pornographic or otherwise, I want my ad label to be harder to see and I want people clicking my results. So I'm <laughs> all in on this. <laughs> this pleases me. So if you want to see how things are going to look in the organic side, or on the ad side with the new mobile format in the Google search engine results pages, head on over to Marketing Clock to see it in action. Yes, and next up, making advertising more transparent on LinkedIn. So you know how you can already go to a business's page on Facebook and see all the ads that they've run? Yes. Well, now you can do that on LinkedIn. I bet you're super stoked. Yay, I love this. <laughs> Everything is going to come out to the surface. You're going to be able to see what everybody's doing and if anybody's doing anything inappropriate. I love it. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think this is great for users. I take zero issue with improvements in the transparency space. But to be honest, as a LinkedIn, a frustrated LinkedIn ads user, there's about 9 million updates I've been wishing for. And this was just not one of them. Not one of the 9 million? <laughs> no, it never even crossed <laughs> wow. my mind. I mean, you can't even, if you're building an ad and you put in your landing page URL, if you screw that up and you replace it with a different landing page URL, it resets all of your creative and pulls in data from the page and takes out like, the headlines that you've put in and your selected images and all that. They need to fix that before worrying about people seeing <laughs> somebody's ads from the last six months. I'm sorry. It's, they should they should be working on some other things as well. Maybe they are. We don't know. You sound a little bitter about that. A little bit because it's <laughs> happened to me many times. It's stupid. Anyway, this is rolling out globally over the coming weeks. It is a good thing, not knocking it at all. So again, note that when users are on your page, they can click on these ads. But as an advertiser, you're not going to be charged for those engagements. So don't worry there. All right. Last up in our main news here this week, Google says image search referrals will not get a new source URL, but forgets to tell us from Search Engine Land and Barry Schwartz. And in July of last year, we found out that Google was going to give webmasters data on traffic from regular old Google search and image search. They'll have a different refer so you can see how the traffic's doing, how it's performing, what's going well, so on and so forth in Google Analytics. We talked about this back in episode 27 of Marketing Clock when we were video only and we weren't that funny at the time. Are we that funny now? I uh, don't think so. I guess <laughs> <laughs> where we still weren't that funny back in episode 27. But I went back to listen to our take on it initially. And in that episode 27, available on YouTube near you, you had discovered what sliding into my DMs meant. Oh, yeah. Do you remember what that means? Yeah, I think it's like when you just... you. You DM somebody out of nowhere and like yeah. hit them up on chat. And it's supposed to be like a sneaky, like flirty thing. It's like the Facebook poke of yes, you're DMs. Yes, you're just messaging somebody. Yeah. It's put in, you're sliding in. It's cool. I mean, like you could just text somebody out of the blue too. And you just, it doesn't sound and, as cool. Hey, hey, guess what? You weren't cool a year ago and you're still not now. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Anyway, <laughs> our thoughts were positive last year. We can figure out who's coming from where, how we can better serve them. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Wrong. Oh. <laughs> Why? This is not coming. Oh. In case you couldn't tell by the title, Google didn't alert anybody to this either. They simply mm -hmm. updated the post from last year, and then they gave a nonsense propaganda-filled statement that I'm not even going to read here, but basically you can see Google Images traffic numbers in Search Console but you can't see any of the key metrics, the revenue, the conversion data in GA. They are not giving that to us webmasters anymore. 
I'm going to use the word rude here because I feel like you make a grand announcement out of something that everybody's really excited about. It's going to be really, really useful. And then months later, not only do you decide not to do it, but you're just, you're, what are you sliding into somebody's DMs to tell them? No, you're not even doing that. <laughs> no, you're <laughs> like sliding. None of us got this information. You're sliding and add it into your blog post. Yeah, that's what you're doing. <laughs> that's terrible. I just think that that's rude and we're all upset about it. So thanks a lot, Google. And that is it for the main news this week. And it brings us to this week's take of the week. This is where we pull out the spiciest take of the week and bring it to you for your consumption. So grab your Tom's kiddos. This week's take comes from the one and only AJ Cohn of blindfiveyearold.com. And it is in regards to the aforementioned Google image refers being stripped away. So this occurred on Twitter. And AJ Cohn. Or at AJ Cohn, that's K-O-H-N. Asked Google's Danny Sullivan the following question. In all seriousness, are we supposed to be okay with not knowing how image search performs from a business perspective? The search vet and all-around great guy, Joe Hall, at Joe Hall, responded with tag whisper. <laughs> they don't give a heck, AJ, <laughs> on tag whisper. <laughs> and I modified that because it didn't actually say heck. It was a little more naughty, Joe. Yeah. And so this is where we get the spice from AJ. AJ says, yeah. It seems hard to come to a different conclusion. The conspiracy theorist would say that making web search look less effective by mixing in poorly performing image search pushes more people into paid search. <laughs> and that's spicy, <laughs> folks, and very hard to argue against. Yeah, and this also pleases me, hashtag team paid. <laughs> oh, you devil, you. All right, and that brings us to this week's Lightning round. Pew, pew. At this point in the show, we split up our content into two parts, paid and non-paid. I cover everything to do with advertising, a.k.a. hashtag team paid, and Greg covers the organic or hashtag team non-paid. <laughs> so here's what's happening in paid this week. This is uh, not rocket science, but a pretty awesome update from Google Ads. They now let you sort your campaigns in that left hand, that left-hand dark panel that you can slide in and out. And it's not just an A to Z thing. There's a number of ways you can sort like by um, how much a campaign is spending and different things like that. So I've seen it in a few of my accounts, but not everything. So I don't know if you've seen it, Greg, in any of your have, accounts. Yes. You have? Awesome. So it seems like it's rolling out. I'm still waiting for it, sadly, in some of my accounts, but it is coming. If you don't see it yet, you will soon. I also believe there's a little notification too, if it shows up for you. Did you get a notification? I didn't actually. Oh, yeah. Maybe I made it. I get so many Google ads notifications about so much nonsense. <laughs> and I might not have been. <laughs> no, but, I mean, according to the article, there is one. You're not wrong. But oh, there's I, a notification. Yeah. Maybe okay. I snoozed it because I get so many and I didn't even, or I X'd out of it, but I noticed the little arrows and I played with it. So yeah, it's probably there. People should pay attention to their notifications. That's lesson learned. Uh, do you want an update on the Google Ads reporting bug? No, okay. I don't. Dear Lord, no. Please. <laughs> Please gonna, no. I'm going to give you one anyway. We're pretty much going to continue to repeat ourselves weekly until this is resolved. May 1st and May 2nd are still jacked in your Google Ads reporting. So if you want more details, check the show notes. Next Thank up. you for that update. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, 2019 themes so far. Privacy, transparency, and ad fraud and bugs lots of bugs <laughs> but, yes of course we're not talking about those oh. anymore we're trying not to but this next piece of news comes to us from marketing land and the article is titled titled larger than usual ad fraud on exchanges prompts google to offer advertiser refunds that's the gist of it pretty much google is issuing refunds to many advertisers that are using double click whose ads were placed on sites with invalid or fraudulent traffic so again this is a trend that we've seen in 2019 lots and lots of ad fraud all the studies that are coming out keep saying you know billions and billions of dollars being wasted on ad fraud and more and more so each year i think the number was something like 16.4 billion they think is projected for 2019. That seems high. This seems like a big number. It's a very very big number. So, uh don't fear if <laughs> if you've been using Google Double Click though, they are going to be refunding some folks who had been subject to ad fraud. They didn't release any numbers though, but I'm guessing it's pretty high cuz they're not really known for giving out refunds or making anybody's lives easier even when it's them that's messed up. So, probably quite a bit here. 
Now, Greg, I know how much you love Google Ads recommendations. I don't. I hate them. <laughs> I know. Well, now you have four new ones to hate because Google <laughs> has updated the recommendations that affect your optimization score. Again, there's four more. If you care what they are, you can check the article for the details. But something that I took out of this article that I thought was very interesting, and these are Google's words, not mine. Optimization score ranges from 0% to 100%, with 100% meaning your account can perform at its full potential. Now, that's fine. That's fine. The rest of the quote, though, you can achieve an optimization score of 100% by applying or dismissing the recommendations in your account. So, Greg, you're probably at 100% because I assume you've dismissed everything. That would be perfect. <laughs> Look at you. That's what I need next. Some AI that can auto-dismiss the recommendations that they give me. Yeah, pretty much you just have to prove that you read it. It's kind of like going through somebody's legal terms and they make you scroll to the bottom <laughs> and check the box even though you didn't read it. It's the their legalese? version of that. Legalese? Great word. It is legalese. a good word. I like it's one word, right? Legalese. Yes. It's beautiful. All right, and lastly, and I guess we're going to go back to Google Bugs because it is a theme. There was a tweet from Melissa Mackey or at Mel sixty six on Twitter. She said, "I'm getting sick of resetting all my saved Google Ads columns because they're missing columns I know I included when I saved. Frustrating and time wasting." Basically, Google Ads responded with, yes, we know about this, and there was a bug. We're working on it. So I'm assuming that these columns are on the same island as Tupac, Elvis, and Google Ads data from May 1st and 2nd. The Big Island? The Big Island. What's that from? That's Hawaii, right? Oh, yeah. That's an actual name of the, the, Big island. Island. the Big Island. It's the mainland in Hawaii. Yeah. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. Columns. <laughs> That's all I got for paid. Over to you. Aloha. All right. This week in non-paid... Google, on Wednesday, decided to stop indexing the web for many sites, not everything. <laughs> and They're just doing whatever they want to these yeah, days. Yeah, just a, nah, a small little bug there. I love them. Where Google had issued a tweet saying, we are currently experiencing indexing issues that may cause stale search results in some cases. We'll update this thread when we can provide more information. It was actually very funny <laughs> looking for some different sites like the New York Times or Search Engine Land, and the most randomized content came through when put to an hour search period, and Google just stopped indexing things. So it's wow. a good reminder to update your Google Analytics annotations for the 22nd of May, as this is another Google bug. And this time, there's just no indexing for a majority of the day. So if you see a dip, <laughs> it's a dip, man. <laughs> they have to stop indexing. Wow. That's okay. All right. Next up, Google dropped updates to the Search Quality Raiders Guide. And the Raiders Guide is what people use to dictate the quality of different web pages and websites. And there was a change a major change, I guess, this round of revisions where the guidelines moved away from the term EAT or EAT, which is expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness, and instead changed many of the instances to the term page quality instead. So RIP EAT, hello, page quality. There's new information and examples as well for interstitial pages things that may force app downloads and other hindrances on their users. And this was added, the interstitial page, specifically in those guidelines. And if you're looking for something to do this Memorial Day, head over to marketingclock.com and you can get a link over to the 166-page riveting reading manual. Or if you're a normal human, Jennifer Slag over at the SAMPost.com has recapped all the major changes in the blog post for you. Your choice. Either way, good Choose. beach reading for this long weekend. <laughs> right, beach reading. Yeah, a lot you can eat there. Okay, next up, Google has a location where you can see your purchases from The Verge. And there is a location, myaccount.google.com forward slash purchases. If you're logged in, you can simply go there and you will see all the data from things that Google thinks you've purchased. And it goes back a long time. Oh, does it? Yes. And I checked this out, Jess. Did you look at your purchases? I'm looking at it right now. And it, the last thing that it says that I purchased was a chili bread bowl. <laughs> and the estimated fulfillment was <laughs> May 14th. Is that roughly right? I, I don't remember the date, but I definitely ordered a bread bowl. 
Was it good? It was delivered here. It was delicious. Okay. The chili was great. But how far does this go back? Because I've bought some things. Oh, my crash test dummies tickets. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay. Memory well, <laughs> lane, this thing. I like this feature. <laughs> okay. Well, Google said back in 2017 that it would stop using data collected from Gmail messages to personalize ads. And I think we should make a new segment called... Let's hope so, because they have everything I've ever purchased in there. And I was looking wow. at what some of the recent purchases were, and I'm going to get ads like I'm a crazy person. I think the last thing I bought was deodorant because I was out and I didn't want to go to a store. Yeah. And then before that was potassium iodine because oh, no. I watched the show Chernobyl oh, on HBO, no. which don't watch anybody. It's not happy. <laughs> Hold on, though. Have you bought French fries online? Because I'm still no, trying to figure I've out why you're interested online. in French fries. I told you the only thing is maybe they're indexing this podcast because I talked about my kids yeah. eating French fries. Well, now I'm just going to bring it up every week because now you're talking about it a lot <laughs> oh and Orida is coming at you. <laughs> well, anyway, let's hope that I guess for advertisers that maybe this product history mm. is possibly going to be usable in the near future. Hashtag team paid. And for you consumers, let's hope it's not. <laughs> And you don't know my my concern over living 20 miles from the oldest active nuclear plant in the U.S. You do? Yeah. Is 20 it, miles. Is it it's still active? That's what yeah, they mean? Yeah, it's the it's oldest been... active nuclear facility. Wow. That's why I'm, I bought potassium iodine. I'm surprised you even still need deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On to the next lightning round article. This is in the lightning round this week. But it's all right. Glass Enterprise Edition 2, faster and more helpful. And Google Glass is still here and it thriving. Is? What? Thriving, yes. Google Glass is out of X, which is Alphabet's moonshot division of the kind of big idea projects. And it's now Google, Google product again. The cost for new glass is $999. I think it's cheaper than whatever we bought glass at. Really? Yeah. That's we should, should money. We used on. it like once. You should wear it. For the I actually show. like Google Glass. I don't remember being able to see it very well on my face. I really like Google Enterprise <laughs> Edition <laughs> 2 Glass, or whatever it's called, because this one comes with safety frames. I don't know if I like the Glass 2 or hmm. if I just like safety frames in general. Because you got to protect your eyes. <laughs> it's really important, folks. <laughs> like, I like the fact that you can. Use, it's now made for people, technicians. Oh, okay. So, like safety glasses. That's what you mean. Yes, I'm and thinking a it's protecting like the little glass thing. No. But you're meaning it's actually protecting your eyes. Yeah, these nice. these glass enterprise edition two is really geared towards those technicians, people out in the field. Or the world's oldest active nuclear power plant. Yes. Yeah. Hey, we're melting down. Take the potassium iodine. Perfect. See, maybe, you, you know what? You should buy this. So it'll be in your purchase history. But I think there is a future in Google Glass or some assisted viewing and assisted visuals market. Hmm. Blink once if you agree. Neither of us blinks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up. Spotify begins testing its first hardware, a car smart assistant. Spotify is going to begin publicly testing a voice-controlled smart assistant for cars, meant to help Spotify learn how people consume audio while they're driving. Jess, yeah, you're a power Spotify user. I am. What do you think about this? I don't really have any use for it. <laughs> yeah, phones have assistants now. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, I don't need an Amazon dash looking button on my car yeah because i assume it doesn't work it, like it would be great if my phone died of course who doesn't have a car charger but let's just hypothetical here if your phone died and you could still use this thing but i it connects to your phone still correct, correct. And that's how it it's to make it easier to to navigate hopefully safer for people people like their devices get yeah get it yeah. out of here i mean it might make sense for people with siri with phones with siri that don't have a working assistant Oh, like my phone? Yeah. Maybe, maybe you should use it. Try to give it a shot. But for assistant, why don't you just say, hey, skip it or something? Can you do that? Yeah, you can do anything. Oh. Assistant's good. I don't I don't know her. I just, Siri and I hang out. I don't use her either. I don't use anything. I bet that's a fun conversation you have with Siri hanging out. <laughs> Sup, Siri? Do you, like, uh, do you like when other assistants are plugged into the car to help you? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, get rid of this. Next, next up. 
This is from Amy Gazenhaus over at Marketing Land, and the title of the article is, Turns Out Some Groups Axed by Facebook for Content Violations Were Actually Hacked. And Amy nailed it in the title. If your group was changed to secret and you weren't being naughty at mm-hmm. all, then you were probably just hacked. So contact Facebook and get that back. That brings us to our real life segment here where we talk about what is going on in our marketing lives and our accounts. It's time for Working Hard or Hardly Working, where we talk about what's going on, good or bad, in our accounts this week. So my show and tell this week is more of a, hey, here's something to try. Could be good for some folks, could be bad. So I'm just going to leave it out there. But for us, we have a client here that's on the B2B side, and we're bidding on some terms around a specific material that has commercial applications, which is what they sell it for, but also has home and auto, use, auto uses on the consumer level. And this is a hashtag team paid? Hashtag account, team paid. Okay. Of course. Yes. Sorry. I should have should have made that clear. So this is uh, for paid search specifically. We've got our negative keywords honed in pretty well, but it's, even with that, it's still hard to weed out some of that B2C traffic. So... I was just wishing out loud that you could exclude audiences like you can in search and display. And Shep here, who we've referred to before, she's our resident 1970s crime enthusiast. Is that what we call her? Yes. <laughs> true crime enthusiast encyclopedia? Yes. A resident true crime reporter. Reporter. Yes, that's right. Well, she's also a brilliant marketer. And she had this idea of setting up in-market audiences for observation on our search campaign so that we could at least determine how much of our traffic was on the hunt for the consumer goods that the client doesn't provide. So not only can you do that in your search campaigns, but you can also apply negative bid adjustments to them if you find that you are getting a lot of this traffic. So pretty sweet, definitely something worth a shot for anyone in the same boat or not. There's lots of uses for this. So I I believe you can only bid them down 90%, correct? Correct. But still, I'd rather pay a lot less for a click than full price. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And on my side, I was looking through a campaign that I inherited that was just relaunched and underperforming. This was one of those campaigns that used to exclude mobile apps via the URL version and needed to exclude the mobile app category exclusions and needed to put those in there. And I did that, fixed some of the performance that had started when I just fired it back up. And then I thought, hey, would this work for my pay for conversion campaigns? I've got a struggle with one account specifically in paying for conversions, just going off the hook with impressions. And I know it doesn't really matter in the scheme of things because you're only paying when a conversion comes through. Mm -hmm. But with clients, you have to explain things and talk about why a conversion rate is is going down even though you're not paying for anything and they're essentially free clicks. But all this garbage traffic makes you have that conversation about a plummeting conversion rate and not focus on ROAS or something meaningful. Mm -hmm. And so it isn't to me worth explaining why we're showing for the Lotto Results app or Happy Color by Number app. Even Even if we're getting free clicks, it's just not worth it to me. And so what I did is I took those mobile exclusions, and I didn't have them on pay for conversions before because I thought, why not? It's free. And I put them in there, and the quality of clicks that's coming through is substantially better, to no surprise. But my initial thought was, hey, leave it alone. I'm not paying for this stuff. I don't care. But I've been forced to care because I have to talk about the conversion rate. I don't feel like explaining pay for conversion every time. And that's helpful, too, because you are essentially collecting all of this traffic in any, you know, remarketing funnels that you may have or, you know, other campaigns where you might be serving to this traffic as well. So it's a bonus help there. Great point. All right. And now it's time for this week's WTH. This week's WTH comes from Mashable and Tesla. And the name of the article is Tesla hires the absolute unit meme guy to run its social media. Jess, were you familiar with the absolute unit meme? (laughs) Not until I read this article. (laughs) And I was very pleasantly surprised. (laughs) No, were you? Yes, I like the meme. I like it too. I just had never heard of it. It's wild. It's a good meme. But Tesla has reportedly hired Adam Kozeri, the man responsible for the absolute unit meme, as its new social media manager. In case you are not familiar with the absolute unit meme, it... (laughs) (laughs) Adam was formerly the program manager for the Museum of English Rural Life. A.K.A. the Merle. The Merle. 
And they are known for tweeting a photo of a large ram from the museum's account in April 2018. And the caption, <laughs> look at this absolute unit, period. First of all, large ram is an understatement. <laughs> this is the biggest, fattest, most adorable sheep I've ever seen. Yes. Look at him. He is an absolute. What does that mean, though, absolute unit? It, it's it's a meme. <laughs> it just said it's an absolute unit. I guess. It's a big old ram. It's an it absolute is. unit. It is. And it actually was an Exmoor horned aged ram. It got 112,000 favorites, <laughs> 31,000 retweets. And according to BuzzFeed, <laughs> Jess is fishing the lawsuit over there, but according to BuzzFeed, <laughs> the meme was ruined last month when Elon Musk saw it in a tweet from the MIT Technology Review, shout out to Power Listener, former intern Amanda over hey. at MIT Technology Review. And so then for some time, Elon changed his Twitter avatar to the RAM and his bio to Absolute Unit. And then <laughs> the Merle changed its <laughs> picture to Elon Musk. And it was a whole thing. Oh, wild. But at the end of the day, it's what a time it is to be alive. <laughs> Adam literally tweeted out five words. What an absolute unit, period. No, not even capitalization. And boom, <laughs> Tesla's social media manager. Oh, my God. I just, I can't stop looking at that sheep. He's so funny. So all I have to say is, oh, my goodness. What a score for Tesla. I hope they're amped to have Adam I'm sure he'll be an absolute jewel for Elon. What? Those are electricity puns. <laughs> oh! Except for the last one. That was a vape pun. So congrats to Adam. I guess this is what you do. Just need five words. Boom. New job. I don't know. I tweeted something that I thought was pretty funny yesterday, and I didn't get a job offer. I got one measly heart on Twitter. What did you tweet? I tweeted, if my name was Julie, I would totally have a blog and call it Peanut Butter and Julie. <laughs> Was that the funny one? That was the funny one. <laughs> but your name is Jack. You get peanut butter and Jesse. How I about know, that? I was home alone and I was eating peanut butter and I was like, I could either tell this joke to my cats or I could tell it to the internet. And I guess I would have been better off telling my cats. Okay. <laughs> well, that's it for this week's WTH. <laughs> it brings us to our cool tool. As a reminder, this segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We are simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be useful to our listeners. And if you're an Amazon retailer, this one is for you. It's called Cellarly, not to be confused with celery. It is sell, like selling something, celery. And it comes to us from the folks behind SEM Rush, which is a great tool that we use here all the time. So Cellarly is a free split testing tool that's designed for A-B testing your product listings on Amazon. So you can test your images, your verbiage, or even different price points against each other and see actual data on what's working. So again, this is a free tool. And if you sell stuff on Amazon, you should probably go play with it. All right. And that brings us to this week's must read marketing article of the week. An article is so in-depth, so detailed that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. This week's article comes from Amanda Robinson over at Social Media Examiner. The name of the article is Facebook Ad Relevance Score Updates, What Marketers Need to Know. And Amanda does a great job of explaining what changed with Facebook Ad Relevance metrics, how to find the ad relevance diagnostics, what they mean how to improve your numbers, discover bottlenecks, and just understand the overall performance with the new ad relevance score updates. So thank you, Amanda. All right, and that does it for today's show. It is now officially not Marketing O'Clock. <laughs> Remember, you can catch everything from the show on marketingoclock.com, so please be sure to subscribe while you're there so you don't miss a single episode. And we will see you next week.